Hi everyone. Starting a couple minutes early. And people get in while I finagle my brush. It's all bent and stuff on the inside. Hello. I got a roll of paper towels ready, but thank you. Cool. So we're going to be doing some remarks today. Again. Still. As always. Yeah, for now. These are, this one's actually not paid for. I just thought it'd be fun to do a jack in the sound. Did you do this with these? Mm -hmm. Okay. Forgot to tell you not to. Cause it just kind of. Oh, is it just like a soft rub? It's super. It yeah. Uh, go get me um. I need a comb. Hold on one second. Yeah, he's a mod. That's uh, the owner of Weird. Hey, Nathan. Yeah, don't, for these brushes, don't do that. Okay. I'm sorry. I, that's my fault. Because they, it's such fine hair. Is it just like you rub it between your fingers? Yeah, you just do this. Okay. Because when you separate it. It frays it. Uh, no, it, it tangles it on the inside of the brush. Oh, okay. So you gotta, like, because it's super soft hair. All right. And those are the. Those are the Neptunes. Neptune brushes. Any soft brush. What's up, Nathan? How goes it, sir? So I, I it's funny, I, I got my little eyebrow comb so that I can take out all the tangles. There you go. I'm combing my brushes. Yeah, it's all good, I forgot to tell you about that. That's my fault, that's not yours. If they dry like that, that's way bad. Okay. Yeah. So you can see that it's, yeah. see how it's a little tangled in there? So you just gotta come in there. Brett says hi. Hi, Brett. Brett Penson? Uh, he? Yep. That's my bro. There we go. And I guess I'll just keep this over here just in case I need to do that again. Yeah, so I figured um, we're going to be doing the jack today. And I think mayhaps the succubus queen. So we're going to start with jack today. How is everyone doing this fine evening? I have told Connor that he needs to speak up and be louder. So tonight we're going to be loud. We're going to be loud. Vocal. That's right. I don't have to be loud. I'm right under the thing. You yeah, have to you're be good. loud. And I, yeah, the funny thing is, is people heard me just fine from over there. But I guess that means I'm just a loud mouth. Yeah, Brett says, sweet and loving the Jack and Sally. Thanks. And he also liked to add that he will now be commenting all in caps. <laughs> I guess I have to vocally express how he feels. Yes, in all caps with lots of exclamation points. In all caps. <laughs> That's funny. See, I'm just working on with my Holbein watercolors. Uh, I'm on a 400 series yeah, stroke more. A 
I'll be doing a uh, talking with Strathmore about my little Finding Tommy documentary. Um, so that'll be a lot of that'll be a lot of fun. Have we got any more books? Or just from what we had last week? Just books? what we had last week. Um, you mean, uh, like... Because you said the last ones we had were like from Pennsylvania and one from New Jersey. Yeah, I got one from Jersey, one from Wisconsin, uh, a couple from upstate New York. From the same person, though. Um, what else? Uh, did I say Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I was talking to them about how many languages they print in, and they print in five different languages. So, there's that. I have to raise this. Hold on a minute. I've been painting all day. My arm is toast. Oh, and for those of you that care, I'm using a number 10 round Escoda brush. Because it's soft. Softer is better for this kind of stuff that I'm doing right now. Now, is Escoda the company? Or? Escoda is the company. Yeah, yeah uh, Tommy had an endorsement with them. They're one of the best brush companies on the planet. It's just the quality of the... Yeah, like, yeah. it's super high-end quality. Uh, they have endorsed two two different types of art, two artists in their entire career. Do you want to hazard a guess who one of them was? I want to say the one you just mentioned. Yep. <laughs> Tommy. And the other one was Salvador Dali. And uh, I believe this is Tommy's brush. I mix. I started mixing all of my stuff in with his once again. You know, just to have everything all in one place. And I'm pretty sure this was his. Was it possibly one of the ones that he used many times that rarely got washed? No. Look at this. This is brand new. Probably you didn't even remember he had it. Uh, you want to see a brush that Tommy used a lot that never got washed? Uh, let's go with... What is it? Well, there's this one. And then there's this one here, which he had actually had cut. Oh, the dragon tail? To make into a dragon's tail. It actually wasn't a dragon's tail. The dragon's tail is floating around here somewhere. Yeah, because wasn't it that they don't make them anymore? They don't make them anymore, no. And then there's this one. So you can see... You can tell which ones. You can tell which ones he used a lot. And mine are, mine are either like this or a little used. You know, but I pulled it from there the other rack that's behind with all the ones, so I it probably was just one that he didn't even realize he had. You know, or just doesn't didn't use it at the time. He often would use the same couple brushes for whatever paintings he was doing. You know, he wouldn't really change mm -hmm. unless it like unless he was using them for um um unless he was using it for like um oils. Then he would switch to brushes for, meant for oils. The one thing he never did was if you're using a brush for oils, you know, they say you have to use oil brushes for oils and so on and so forth. But the, um, what he always would do is just use, you know, he used whatever brush he liked, but if he used it for oils, he kept it used for, used for oils. So it just became... It became an His oil brush. own or oil brush. Yes, yeah. So he's, I mean, on the the weird painting, which was um, aqua oils, um, he used, like, watercolor and acrylic brushes on those. 
but when you use a brush for oils and then switch over to watercolor, you have an interaction because the oil, the, the hairs have follicles and they absorb the, the chemical and the pigments and the oil in the oils. Mm -hmm. So then you have a resistance. Does that make sense? Like yeah. it doesn't hold as much. So how's everybody out there in TV land? Right now, all we got is Brett and Poodle Mama. Hey, Poodle Mama. Now we're just waiting for Wiener Mama. Right? That's all we need. She was like a light blue, wasn't she? Like a grayish, yeah. dead color. Yeah, I think I successfully got a good color. Can you see okay? Yep, you're good. Okay. I raised it up a little bit. Like I said, I've been painting all day and it's just, I'm like, oh, I'm tired. Actually, I don't think I ever lowered this. Judging from my husband's shortness, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's all the way to the bottom. Poodle Mama said, I just got here, brought the dogs in, and we are all resting. Good to see you. Awesome. Good to see you as well. Thank you again for joining us. I've been painting my ass off the last couple days. I was like, ah, am I gonna stream tonight? I'm exhausted. Ah, screw it, I might as well stream. I gotta get this work done anyway. Yeah, Justin uh, N Napoleon JD yep. is who those pieces are for. The, the one that'll be... For Justin? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he usually comes on kind of in the middle. Mm-hmm. So it's no sense in having me start one of his start pieces. one of his and then he misses it. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, peace out, everyone. In case you got to tune in tomorrow to watch it. Right. Tune in next week. So I got the final info on the award that I'll be doing. Uh, in uh, I, that I'll be presenting in Canada, and it is the uh, Tommy Castillo or the Castillo Award, which um, is for an up and what's going on in there? Oh, Uzi. Yeah. Uh, for an up and coming um, professional like young artist. So. Uh, I can't really say who it is, but I they gave me the nominees and I picked the winner. And I said this one, and I'll be presenting that to them um, on in uh, in Canada. So we're doing a little. I'm going to talk about Tommy a little bit and about the award, about the um, why we're doing the award. Um, in terms of, like, um, that's way too dark. In terms of, like, why we decided to do the type of award we did, I guess, is a good way to put it. Um, so yeah, they get to, they get a free table at next year's show. Uh, and then they, they get lessons with me. So, that's either going to be really awesome for them, or really not. <laughs> Apparently, Tommy gave her thigh gap. <laughs> the way her hips are. And thigh gap. Oh, that was funny. Uh, I know one side's pink. 
One side's yellow. I don't know. I don't know. Brett said it's go it's going to be awesome, or it's going to be awesome. There you and, go. Uh, Poodle Mama said sounds like fun. Yeah, I initially thought it was like a uh, a lifetime achievement award. Like, that I would be accepting on behalf of Tommy and then giving out. But they have one of kind of something like that already. And, um, you know, Tommy, um, Tommy having, uh, um, you know, doing a lot with teaching and stuff like that. This actually fits better with what, like... The, what he does and did rather Sally doll Nightmare Before Christmas oh there she is okay I don't know what her paint job is so we'll figure it out okay that's horrifying and those are the mercuts and I have those I just don't know where they are okay so Green, mustard yellow, faded pink. Got it. Let's get with the mustard yellow. I'm doing my Holbein because they they're just the <laughs> they are a bit more opaque than the other ones, and because this is kind of on gray paper, um, I'm, uh, you know, I, I want it, I want it to show up a bit better. I want it to be a bit more pigment heavy. Sounded like painting all day. It didn't just wear out your arm. I don't know. It really didn't. And I totally just effed up too. Cause oh, was it green that's sleeve? supposed to be a green sleeve. Well, just do it backwards. That'll be the green sleeve. Might be a short, uh, short streaming day. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I think I'll just make it like a. I'll just make it. I think everything more. should just be one color. <laughs> like, oh, you mean like monochromatic? No, 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 no. No, just, just literally one, one solid color. color, top to bottom. I can't believe I just did that. I'm like, okay, the other sleeve is not green. And then I paint the green sleeve green. Not green. Whatever. I give up. <laughs> you just gotta stop talking. You can listen to dead silence. So is it like you're telling in your brain you're telling yourself, don't paint it green, yellow. Don't paint that yeah, one yellow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, don't paint it yellow, don't paint it yellow. Blah 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 shit, I've just painted it yellow. That's alright. I'll survive. This is like a light orange color. This. So what's everybody up to these last few days since last we've met? Connor's not exactly the master of conversation yet, so. He's just like, like a deer in the headlights back there. Brett said, editing the, editing the video from today's podcast. Oh, cool. We should do another podcast. You and I. And then my mom said, work, work, and more work. You have to speak up. You're speak mumbling. Up. I'm not mumbling. Yes, you are. Well, then Man. I have a very mumbling voice. Well, be loud. I know you can be loud. I've heard it. 
Mumbler. Don't be like all those other millennials. Be louder. Oh. Millennials yes. are the loudest ones because they're barking about stupid crap. Well, bark like a millennial then, just not about stupid shit. Whatever gets I'm you offended. to. I'm offended. I feel so offended. Yeah, whatever gets you to talk louder, just do that. Brett said, yes, besides that, I'll be down there in December for a couple weeks. Oh, Let's cool. get together, have fun, and do a video. Or d do a fun video. Yeah, when are you coming down? I have a little show in Jekyll Island. Uh, the... I thought that was in November. Nope. I just booked another show in November, though. Um, fuck. Uh, the... When is Jekyll Island? Um, 10th, 10th and 11th, I'm gonna go check the 11th board. and 12th, something like that. It's one of those days. Uh, and then Kansas City is the oh, 10th through the 12th of November. And then the week after, uh, I just booked a show in Missouri. Um, and that is... I'm just going to make it up now because it doesn't look anything like that. Um, it is going to be whatever weekend. The 17th, 18th, 15th, 16th, whatever. I don't know. Where it said, I was going to try and do Jekyll Island my way down, but they're sold out. It's December 9th and 10th. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah, that. That date. That date, Yes. I want her to be more interesting, so I'm not using the faded colors. That's what I'm going with. Didn't you do the one in Baltimore with that, too? Yeah. Yeah. That's more interesting to look at. You know? I mean, the one in the movie was meant for the one in the movie. Mm -hmm. But in, like, real life, it's all... It's actually quite boring looking. So I just wanted it to be cool. Sally show up, Jack. That would be cool, too. Give him time. Brett said, I'll be in Orlando Monday through Thursday after Jekka Island. Okay. And in Florida till December 27th. Cool. Well, uh, and he also said, I will have plenty of time for you, sis. Yes. That sounds good to me. That sounds excellent. Let's get this, like, what color is that? I don't even know what color that is. Let's mix it with that color and hope for the best. Because I can't really see because of the shadow. Yay. Oh, that's... Oh, I must have picked another green. I was like, that's not any different than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right. Color Christmas lights should we do? Uh, actually, I'll uh, wait until I do the background. Let her dry. Background. Color background should we have? Hmm. I have no idea. Let's just do this. Are you going to make the trees pop out? Or no, I'm going to just paint it? over them and hope for the best. Okay. Of course I'm going to make the trees pop out. <laughs> That's like, I'm just going to color Jack green. Like, meh. Well, I mean, we were discussing that earlier. Yeah, it's all one color. Meh. Ah, uh, you cracked me up, kid. And I have a hair, one of my hairs, on the brush. You just say it's for abstract art. Eh, yeah, right. Abstract. It's how I feel. It's how Jack feels. Yeah, 
Yeah, luckily I'm painting on Strathmore, so I can actually come in with one brush, paint these colors, you know, and then come back in and blend it, you know, blend it out. Can you give me that water? Oh, that, that can get cold. So what was it that you said splits apart the numbers for Strathmore paper? Between like 300, 400, 500? Uh, quality. Well, what, you said it was they, the... Oh, the paper, the, um, the sizing and the amount of cotton in the paper, basically. That's really what matters. Mm -hmm. So like, I just, oh, I, I, we packed it up, Never mind. I painted a Kermit on 400 and then went back and painted a Kermit on 500. And they're like, it's not night and day, but you the 500, uh, like when you're painting on it, it's, and you know what you're doing? Yeah, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. You know, and the difference, because I was doing that Bristol Maleficent. How did that dry, by the way? Did it dry cool? Yeah, it looked really good. The black really brought it, like it actually made it feel like it was more of a lifelike, because it blended so perfectly into it. It's like you know what you're doing. Yeah. You can bring it out if you want to show everybody. So yeah, I'm just using this brush to cut out the characters with the background, just to lay in this background. And this is a squirrel oval wash brush or something like that. Super soft hair holds a lot of pigment, holds a lot of water. Let me just finish this. So yeah, so I just finished this today. This Maleficent. Can you see it? Yeah, you're good. And this was painted on plate smooth. Smooth Bristol. Which is a pain in the ass to paint on, but Kind of gave it a cool effect. I threw some airbrush here and into the greens. Let's see if you guys can see it better. I know I'm probably throwing a shadow on it. But. And if anybody asks, yes, that is me. That is me. Tommy drew me as, <laughs> yeah, it's got green on the back. Um, Tommy drew me as Maleficent and he was gonna do a big painting about it. Obviously, that didn't hurt Kerr, but I got the sketch. Yeah, Poodle Mama said, like the background. Yeah, it's cool. I tried to make it look like her fire, you know, because with that painting on that Bristol, it's one, one stroke and it's down and you can't move it again. So every brush stroke is kind of like layered and layered and layered, you know, and it gets very um it, it's if you don't know what you're doing it's difficult to paint over and the you know that's the way it, you roll right Connor yes ma'am if he's not talking loud enough tell him to speak up So I watched um, Spider-Man Homecoming the other day. Did I say yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yesterday. And I watched. Is it Pirates? Yeah, the foot, the fifth Pirates movie. And uh, I liked it. I liked the the fifth Pirates movie. 
I know a lot of people said that they didn't really enjoy it because they made Jack kind of a more. He was a loser. Yeah, less and less of the the rogue adventurer and more of the comical like. Yeah, but fool. but the problem, but that's the character. Like that character doesn't have a long shelf life, you know. He's not a very good pirate. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way it goes. I liked what they did with it. I mean, he was so smarmy and he effed everybody over that, you know, when the time comes that real life comes back. I mean, when was the first Pirates movie out? 2004? Yeah, 13 years. 13 years. You know? So, yeah, I mean, he was a... You know, that's his... I like the fact that they they did that. And it worked well because they had, you know... They had Barbosa. They brought the cast back. They brought it, yeah. And they did it... It had the same feel as the original movies, which is what I liked. Like, On Stranger Tides was just... Effing terrible. I don't even know what that was. But it had the same feel. Uh, this movie had the same feel as the originals. You know, with the young and the adventure. And it was it was a lot more fun, I think. I know the effects for this one. I actually got excited to see. Yeah. Because compared to back when the first one came out and they did oh the, yeah where they, they did, did the, the, the guys that were burnt away and that's yeah. how they stayed and so like I think the the lead villain his like just his face was sitting there with his hair flowing back and like yeah cause he died was, in the he was de dead in the water yeah. so his body was perpetually in the water that was yeah they did they, the effects on that were just phenomenal they did wonderful on those uh what Hendrick, H1NDR, 4NC3. Okay. He says, OMG, I haven't seen y'all streaming forever. Well, I'm here. Yeah, I just started, I with everything that happened with Tommy, I just recently, I think last week, started live streaming. The voice in the background is my assistant, Connor. And I am the Resistance. Yes, his name is John Connor. The Quiet Resistance. <laughs> the very, very Quiet Resistance. Uh, Brett said, I love the pirate movies, even the most recent. This last one was a great end to the series. It's not over. It's definitely not over. Because the cast signed on for sixth, sixth film. Mm. That, that one is the next film, is the last film. And uh, a certain tentacle face comes back. Mm. Good to know they had the after credit scene. Yep. Yeah, working in a movie theater, I learned some stuff without even having to see the movie. Yeah. Well, you come in at the very end and you're like, oh. You have to clean up everything. And then it's like, oh, wow, that's cool. You had to. I wonder what else happened. <laughs> Although, at the end of Spider-Man was just hilarious <laughs> with Captain uh, Captain America and he comes on and he's like talking about patience and how you've waited so long for something so worthless and then he looks over and he's like how many more of these that look like knowing knowing Evans like that look that he gave and then asking that I would not be surprised if he actually just said that like that was him saying this he's just he is totally a smarmy not smarmy a smart ass he's very much a smart ass snarky was the word i was looking for i'm a professional of life professional life huh what kind of bullshit answer is that said, uh, sweet, I, haven't, I hadn't heard that. I guess he's mentioning how he didn't uh, for the sixth Pirates movie. Yeah. yeah. And then Heinrich asks, uh, how's Tommy? 
Ah. Um. Well, Tommy is no longer with us. Uh, unfortunately, about four months ago in June, um, Tommy passed from um, the kidney failure and liver failure. So he is now beyond the veil. Yeah, we were in the process of getting him approved for the transplant. And he got injured. He hurt his foot. And then it got infected and all this other crap. And basically his body just kind of tanked on him. So that's the super short version of it. Which really fucking sucks. But I am here taking over. As you well know, I'm an artist as well. So I'm still doing all the art and all the fun stuff. Uh, I'll be just the battery instead of Tommy. And everything is coming out under uh, Tommy Castillo Studios. I got a bunch of artists working with me to... Uh, you know, to continue all the projects, get the Dark Side of Oz out, so on and so forth. So nothing, nothing's going away, unfortunately, except the person that I didn't want to go away, which is, of course, Tommy. I think we do, like, snow splatter. I think that'd be cool. My, my left wrist hurts from holding everything up. Isn't that stupid? It's like your body knew. You've been working with the right all day, but we got to balance this out. No, my, my right shoulder hurts and my left wrist hurts. But honestly, I haven't drawn or painted like this in a very, very long time. And I've basically been drawing and painting every day for 10 to 12 hours a day since we got the studio worked up good, so good week. A good week yeah i did take saturday off i did nothing on saturday i watched uh, i i watched cartoons all week all, all saturday and by cartoons i mean anime but we don't say that word in this house the walls will shake so i called them Adult cartoons. <laughs> For how much anime is out in the shed? The word that just catches fire out of nowhere. No, see, because... As long as it's outside. As long house. as it's for sale, <laughs> and it was previously read... I will allow it. Tommy will allow it. No, he actually liked a, a, a good bit of the stuff that I liked, because I would force him to watch it. You know, because he basically felt that everything anime sucked. Like, but what he hated was, like, the super, like, deformed... The, like, the neck that doesn't connect to the head properly. Yeah, and, and the really pointy chin yeah. and the big, big eyes. You know, that that super deformed anime crap version, you know? And I never watched that. I watched, I watched cool shit, like Berserk and... Of course, goes to the shell and and cowboy bebop and stuff like that. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch that kind of crap. So I made him watch the stuff that I watched, and he liked. Yeah, I, I had him watch Psycho Pass because he was watching it. He actually was. I like was watching it when I was watching it. He was actually asleep and woke up and started watching it. He's like, what are you watching? I'm like, it's called Psychopaths. He's like, oh. So he ended up watching it for a little while. And then, um, um, he liked it. So we ended up finishing the series. Uh, and then, um, uh, what else did I have him watch? I watched something else. I was gonna make him watch Cowboy Bebop. But he escaped my clutches before he could. That's the real reason he's gone. He just didn't want to watch any anime. 
I did find one. I've been trolling, trolling uh, Hulu, and I found a really cool one called Gangsta, and uh, it was really good. I was, I was, as a storyteller, you know, it had really cool characters and really cool, um, you know, likability for the characters, even though they were kind of asshole scumbags. You actually really liked them. They were cool guys, and you know the whoever wrote it. I guess it, it's an it's a manga, and the um I don't know if he wrote the TV show or not, but it it was a cool idea. You know, it was a cool idea to what he had going on. So yeah, I liked it. Because didn't you say that Tommy Moore, he enjoyed more of, he, he pretty much showed him the light of that animes have very well put together stories, aside from the art styles that they chose. Yeah, like, uh, I introduced him to, uh, I introduced him to Blade of the Immortal, and he, you know, really liked that. Um, he actually really liked the style because the artist actually understands anatomy. Mm -hmm. And that's what Tommy hated was the anime artists, whether they were Japanese or American, that didn't understand anatomy, you know? Get the hint, kid. kid. Um, so that's what he didn't like. You know, it's one thing to deform a character and make it cartoony. It's another to not even know anatomy and then try and super deform something. Mm -hmm. You know? <clears throat> that's... That's what he didn't like. And that's my ringtone, which is a dinosaur sound. And my niece Jade is calling me. She call If I don't answer immediately, she calls like six times in a row. It's like, uh, I love you, but obviously I'm busy. That was four. She has two more times. Hey, oh, I was like, levitation. So I'm just adding this dark green for some variation and separation. With my big old wash brush. I'm gonna see her in like less than a week. What 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 does the ten year old have to say that can't wait a week? Right? Well as a ten year old. Apparently a lot. Well, from the experience I had one year in my life, uh, when, I, when, being, I, when, when I you was were ten, <laughs> the only time I was ten. I think mentally you stayed ten for a while. Yeah, ten to now. Ten so, to now, sounds yeah. Sounds right. Sure, I'm just gonna throw my brush in. What else? Let's see, what's with Jack? So that will see if we do this. So has anybody seen any movies lately? It's like whatever you do, don't say Blade Runner. Why? I liked the story of Blade Runner. Yeah, and I thought it was a masterpiece. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. You haven't even seen it. <laughs> exactly. But I think I've... Being over here every day, I've heard enough from you to kind of get the gist of it. I didn't tell you anything about the story. You told me enough. I didn't tell you anything about that's it. That's a story. You told me, like... I told you what I didn't like about the general story. Or uh, the general... I, the I thought the visual sucked. The the visuals sucked. I'll the just, story I'll just was have the just... audio of the new movie, but I'll watch the, the old one. And I'll kind of just pair it together. 
Don't want listen to the audio because then you get that annoying <laughs> constantly. The director's cut just has like a little warning pop up in the bottom corner. That gave time. me such a fucking headache too. Pardon my language, but it made me so mad. It did. It gave me such a headache. I was so annoyed. The director is just like, I'm going to make this a real Ridley Scott film. Uh, he did Cicero? The director? I think is what he did. Like what he's like known for. Mm. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but... I just... It was... It gave me a headache back. Because it's it like... Okay, I'm just going to throw water at Jack. That's fine. My coordination sucks today. Um, well, like, the story was exactly like, not exactly like, but the pacing of the story is just like the original. Just like the original. Slow. Slow like, as shit. Yeah. You know? Um, I had no problems with that, because that's what you expect. Like, that's... It's Blade Runner. It's Blade Runner. Um, the... And then the 10 minute establishing shots, yeah, that's on par with the original flick too. There was like a five minute scene of Harrison Ford walking up a flight of stairs, you know, through an, a, 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 an old abandoned apartment building. You know, like that stuff I'm fine with, like that's what you expect. But the sound, when you have 10 minute establishing shot scenes, you know, like, you know, you wanna spend seven minutes of watching him fly over the wasteland of San Diego, which hasn't changed much. Um, and then you have that, that, that engine whir sound that's just so just loud. And it, it, it was harsh. It was like, ring, ring. like, I get it. I get it. But no. But every time is in every, like, it's just Yeah. And when you're reestablishing a world like he had to do, you know, it's completely understandable that you have a lot of establishing shots, but you don't use the same effing annoying ass sound effect in every effing establishing shot. You know? Because it gets annoying, and then on top of that, if you're trying to establish a new location. Yeah, and, and the visuals, like, the cinematography was fine, but the it's actual just... art direction sucked. Yeah. It did. It Brett, was boring. Brett said, I enjoyed the new Blade Runner, but it was an unnecessary sequel. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Like, the world could have done without. Yeah. I mean, I had no problem with it. Like, there was no... There was nothing giving there... off a vibe of, like, this is a monstrosity of a film. No, How it wasn't a it? bad movie. And I never said it was a bad movie. It just was visually boring. And that... That ex that sound effect in terms of a soundtrack in lieu of a soundtrack was really. Are you having issues? No, just making them sorry. Don't put stuff on top of the base. Because when I play really loud music, it rattles and falls off. So there. Yeah, I had my problems with, um, uh, you know, um, um, pirates, you know? Yeah, like, no movie's perfect. No movie's perfect. But, I mean, it's not, I don't, I did not think that Blade Runner was a bad film at all. Like, it, it was a pretty decent film, actually. For its budget, I don't really know, like, I don't know really know what they spent on it because they could have just effing went to Newark, New Jersey and gotten the same shots. You know? You want a city wasteland, there you go. But, you've been to Newark. Oh, no, you haven't. You were only to South and Central. I enjoyed Spider-Man a lot. I did. 
I don't like what they did with Tony Stark, though, but every character's got to go somewhere. Well, like his aftermath after Civil War and the way he acts now compared to, like... He acts super preachy, mm -hmm. you know? And I... From a guy that didn't <clears throat> give a shit at all, you know, to a guy that now thinks he should be everyone's dad. Like, in Civil War, like, I agreed with Cap. I was like, go get your cap. And yeah. I'm not a big Cap fan. But, you know. That was one thing that I thought was... Because when Civil War came out, everyone was trying to do like, the same thing they did with Batman and Superman. They're, like, picking sides. And for Civil War, they really narrowed it down to, like, you're going to go after Cap because he's kind of the... the in Not in the... He wasn't in the wrong. He wasn't in the wrong, but he had the more justifiable, like, reasoning of doing what he was doing. For, like, a, a, a more well-rounded purpose. His reasoning was more appropriate than, than, um, than, um, Tony's, because Tony's was made out of cowardice. Tony couldn't handle his own, ha Tony couldn't handle the consequences of his own actions. Mm -hmm. So he says, well, I want to take all responsibility out of my hands. Captain America, who had can survived World War Two was in the shit and is ninety years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, he like he basically woke up and went into another war. Knew that that was not a good thing. Governments don't get shit done. If you actually look at it, a lot of the films that after Avengers that they have Tony Stark in, if he's not like a side character, a lot of the stuff in those movies are mostly out of like a lot of the problems come from him. Yeah. Because, like, Avengers 2 was... you. If you wanted to say, yeah, Ultron was the bad guy, but everyone could honestly point fingers to Tony and say... If you well, just, it was Tony... Yeah, it was, it, it was... mostly Tony. Mostly Tony. Banner helped, but it was mostly Tony. But that's... You know, that's character development. You can't have a series lasting how many years without your character... Your characters have to develop in one way or another. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how they've developed... Um, they developed been, yeah, I think it's almost been 10 years. I think Iron Over. Man... I thought Iron Man came out in 8. Oh, eight. No, I think it was earlier than that. Because I know Avengers was 12. The first one to come out was... Because it was Iron Man? 2005, I think. Really? I think so. Because I know they did the... Look it up. I know they had the Spike Lee Hulk, but then Iron Man was the first establishing of the Marvel right. Universe. Look it up, family. Uh, family. Folks online. You're my family now. I've decided this. I'm teaching the kids storytelling, so actually... Talking about story is helping him learn. We have a very quiet audience today, I guess. Yeah. Um, kind of the same numbers as the past few days. What's that? Just like l under 10 people. Yeah, but... That's fine. Yeah, 2008. Oh, it was Yeah, oh, it was Iron Man. Because I know that was like the big groundbreaking one for Marvel. Like that was their start. And then they did the Edward Norton Hulk. And they tied the universe together with... He was so pissed at them. Because didn't he want more money when they, no, like, they come he, back for him? No, he refused to deal with them because um, he was supposed to have um, final say on the edit. He was he had approval of final edit. And they bypassed him. They gave... they. He said he approved the edit. And then they went back and re-edited it. And then put that one out into theaters. Hmm. And so the message or whatever he wanted or how he wanted it. It was just lost. It was, it was completely After, different. Yeah. And he actually, he didn't even go to the premiere. He boycotted his own film. Which was a horrible career move. Because where is he now? What was the last film you saw him in? Yeah. Can't even think. I don't think he's been in much Re recently or in the past since. Since then, I haven't seen him yeah. in anything. Uh, he was in he, he actually was in a movie with Bill Murray, and that's all I remember. 
I think it was a Netflix movie. Hmm. Well, we're going back to the trusty uh, calligraphy brush pen to get these lines down. La, la, la. How long have we been on? Uh, we're about to hit an hour. Wow, I'm painting slow as shit. Sorry, folks. Look, it's it's Groucho Marks. Yeah. some creative choices and give him the uh, give him a mustache give him the the two finger mustache thinking of uh, more movies for the that's it just thinking more movies for the what just the, like what stuff's coming out soon oh I haven't seen Kingsman I don't know much about it I mean I know I mean I know about it but yeah. I, I haven't really heard yay or nay about it because I know we have Ragnarok comes out in November yeah. along with Justice League Everybody's all freaking out about uh, Batfleck. I think the people, the the people that are like, he needs to step down as Batman immediately. It's like, yeah, I'm sure the studio that just, you know, spent billions of dollars, millions of dollars on their newest franchise workhorse is gonna just follow your Facebookies because he supposedly grabbed a girl's butt or something. I don't know. I'm not weighing saying supposedly. I'm just saying. I don't know if he did. I wasn't there. I didn't know if he didn't. Hollow Heartthrob says hello. Hello. Long time no see. I wonder how much ink I have left. I think I'm running out. What's the happening? I really like this brush pen. The ink on this is just awesome. What was the ink that, what was that ink again? The Sumi brush ink. Sumi. Calligraphy ink. Mm -hmm. So it's like super dark. Super like, deep black. Yeah. You know. I like this one with more of a harsh outline. Like normally I would just Oh Sally, I got lipstick on your face. Um Normally, I would just take a, um, um, normally I would just take a, um, problem solved, um, like color pencils or something like that, or I'd go in with a watercolor, but I want it, I don't know, I like more of a bold line for this. You know, I think it works better. I think it stands out more and gives that separation. It's more contrast, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hollow Heartthrob said, I finally had a moment to sit down and watch. Awesome. I'm really happy you've been painting on here. Thank you. Me too. I have been painting my ass off. 
Tommy left me with a year-long commission list to finish. Isn't that nice? Such a considerate man. See, for how long you've been painting all day, you should just turn the camera on at a 12-hour stream. Oh my god, right? <laughs> That'd be awful. Well, I mean, it'd be fine, but half of it wouldn't be anything but me just painting. Like, there'd be no sound. People are okay with that, though. They're like, yeah, no problem. I'm like, really? You watch that? And they're like, yeah. I mean, after the internet, the, the level of voyeurism in our, you know, society is like, it went from like, oh, can you watch? And now it's like, you don't watch? It's kind of weird. Not that I have a problem with it, but it's just funny. Just it's the, the way of the internet. Yeah, it really is. How... Can you see? I'm not blocking this with my head. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. It's just like how there's the new, the newest fad is uh, just watching other people play video games. Oh, I don't get it. I think it's that's boring as shit. Like I, I was like, oh, video games, but apparently it, that's a thing, and they make those guys make money. Like people give them money to just play that game. Yeah, because they'll live stream. And then people just give donations, pretty much. Yeah, They're doing it's like, nothing except just playing a game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. See, I know there's... I've seen people that are actually, like, very charismatic and... Yeah. And they don't really play the game, like, for live... Like, they don't play the, uh, the co-op games, where it's just, like, fighting. They'll just play a game and just be charismatic and funny, so it's, like... Right. It's, re it's understanding so to it's watch it. So it's entertainment. Yeah. And then there's, as you said, the ones that are making... Money. Their entire paycheck off of just playing it's games. Crazy. It's so weird. <laughs> so you should go outside and get some sunlight. Sorry, Mom, I'm making a, making about three grand right now. I'm busy. Well, I mean, I was playing D and D yesterday and made seven hundred and fifty bucks <laughs> sitting on my ass playing D and D. So can't complain about that. Yeah. So we, I decided, my dad, with Sierra and and Connor, I decided that uh, I wanted to play. Dungeons and Dragons again, you know, because I haven't in forever, and I was supposed to start playing again with Tommy, but, you know, I figured it'd be fun, because those, they never played D&D &D before, so I got to, they were playing Advanced Second Edition. Cause I've been playing, I've I've been playing. I played D and D since I was like a little kid, like six years old. I was playing, and it really was only like the last ten years I really haven't been able to because of Tommy and his health and all that. So, but Tommy actually rolled up a dwarf character, and his name was Florp Thorgrim. Yes, I will say that again. Florp, F L O R P. Space, Thorgrim, T H O R, T H O R G U M, N. Thorgrim. Thorgrim, G G. You said G U, so G R U. G R U. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to, how it was spelled in my head. I don't even fucking know. Yeah, and he basically he played twice, and he got drunk every time, and then I'm pretty sure the he. What did he do? He did something. What did he do? He like tripped and fell and knocked over a building or something. Like he, I don't remember. It was very strange. He got drunk in the middle of a cave or something. I don't even know. Oh, and he had a fear of, he had a fear of something really ridiculous because he was a dwarf. Um, He had a, like, it, where most dwarves aren't afraid. What was it? Was it like the one that your dad rolled up? Yeah, it was he's like. He's afraid of the dark, but he's, he's a mining gnome. Or he's a mining, mining dwarf, dwarf, but he's, but he's afraid, afraid of, the of the dark. Yeah, it was something like that where he was like afraid of something silly that dwarves normally aren't afraid of, but. He's afraid of ale. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're allergic to ale. No! Um, yeah, it was very strange. But he had fun. He giggled a lot. He's like, I'm going to do this. 
I mean, he was he was killing it as a dwarf. Like he was straight up killing it. Uh, Hollow Heartthrob said, "I'm guilty of watching PPL game." Just means like people playing online. Right. Uh, he said, I mostly like it for the people who play and to check out the new games. Oh, yeah. that's fair. Like, yeah, like sometimes you don't want to actually go pay the $60 and get the game yourself, so it's, it makes sense to kind of get like a on-hand review yeah. beforehand. Yeah, because if you're not sure if you're going to like the game or the gameplay. Yeah. Because what they show you now is... They show you the, the, the graphics they put together almost like a movie. Yeah, and and, the but the hard part is, is like, like you go, you get into your graphics and you're like, um... Donde esta what I just saw. You know? No, I get that. I do indeed get that. Unless it's a Final Fantasy game. Let's not talk about Final Fantasy. I'll be here for fucking hours talking about Final Fantasy. I mean, the one thing you could say is that Square Enix always pushes... Square Enix. Square Enix pushes the bar for the level of realism in their games. Even though the anatomy sometimes won't match up. But they put a lot of like very well put together lighting, and then yeah, they make movies that you interact with. Yeah, Advent Children, for example. That was just a movie. Well, I mean, it was a movie, but a lot of their newer stuff is as yeah, as you yeah. said, just movies you interact with. Because a lot of games now are just uh, what's it called? Towards you're just watching a scene. And it's like quick press A. Yeah, like you don't even know that it's a cutscene. Yeah. If it's a cutscene or not. That I mean. scene, that's pretty much the entire game. There's no you walking around doing random stuff. It's just. Yeah, I, a I long hated that about scene. 13. Like, 13 was so closed that I was just like, this. I, I never finished 13. I, I, I got a. For my birthday, Tommy actually bought me a, um, a PlayStation 4. The actually the um, the um, Final Fantasy fifteen PlayStation four, uh, so I could or, uh, so I could play you know fifteen, but I've been waiting for fifteen for probably longer than you even knew that Final Fantasy existed. I think it was like ten years in the making. Because they would get to it, and then they the technology would change, and then it was supposed to have like a versus kind of thing. But then they're like, no, no, let's change that and make it Disgaea. So then they made Disgaea, and then they're like, oh, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna make this instead. So, yeah. Now they have their. Now it's a big MMO too. Well, they they have a. Uh... Final Fantasy 7 Remastered coming out. So excited. I got that. Oh my god, I'm excited for that. Oh, I'm so excited for that one. No one's gonna see me for about a, a you know, about <laughs> six months after I get that game. Sam, that it's so nice to see Cloud without the ginormous... <laughs> you don't like the Popeye <laughs> arms? <laughs> and his bulbous shoulders and how every other character looks like that. <laughs> Aw, oh, you don't want, like, his Popeye <laughs> arms? It's like, how do you, else do you think he lifts up the Buster Sword? He has to be ripped. And only <laughs> the lower, his forearm, and then the shoulders. It's the Popeye effect, brother. <laughs> no, it's, it's fucking... That's hilarious. Well, I know if you, if as anybody, and I'm sure as you too... Uh, being a true fan of Final Fantasy VII, the second you see the remastered trailer, and they, and the second you hear the first note of the, I got, the theme okay. song, no, no, okay, <laughs> I got like, like it was the same thing for when I saw Star Wars: The Force Awakens when the it just, mm -hmm. like you get all giddy and you get all teary eyed and then you're like, yeah, and you're happy and you start like teary eyed and then goosebumps and you're like, yeah, like that, that's what happened. And then the date of the, the release date pops up and you get so excited because it's only a few months away. And you... Well, the release date here... Seven. Is December. Yeah. Supposedly December this year. But if we go by Square Enix's normal 
thing. They're going to say December, and then it, it's not going to be out until, like, the beginning of next year. Because they did that with 15. It was supposed 15? to be out on my birthday. And then they pushed it out to the end of November. Hmm. Or, or end of, middle of November. So normally <laughs> they'll be like, yay, and then no. Like Just kidding. Those few bugs. Just kidding. We, we found those extra bugs. Ha. Ah, sorry. Just kidding. I feel like I'm doing more talking than drawing right now. It's all right. Hey, you know what? I think Tommy would be like, hey, you can play all the video games you want as long as you get your fucking work done. Which is true. You can have cake after dinner. I'm an adult. I can have it before. <laughs> what game I really liked that I played obsessively, actually, was, um, not obsessively, but a recent game that just came out, Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. And that was amazing. And that's like the animals are like They're like robotic. Yeah, like, it, yeah, it's... I can't really explain the game without kind of screwing it all up, yeah. you know, because it's a super long game. The gameplay is, it, like, mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, and it was, you know, it was so much fun. I'm right at the very end because I actually was playing it, and then Tommy went to the hospital, and then I stopped playing it, obviously, and I haven't picked it back up. I'm like right in front of the last boss, but I I ended up getting the strategy guide because there's it's so massive that you you can't you can't even attempt to find everything that you need, you know. Because I think that's the one they said the map in it is just it's massive. It goes on. It it's well, I was a little disappointed when I got all of the sections. I was like, oh, but yeah, it it's it's massive. I don't, I think I'm in like, I don't even know, because it was my stress relief, you know, when I was taking care of Tommy, and he really actually wanted the game, not me, he wanted the game, because he would watch the trailers of it, and he thought it was amazing, so I'm like, all right, sure, you know, like, let's, I'll buy it, and I'll play it, so I got it for him, and he watched, he watched me play, actually, a good chunk of it. And then he would just get tired and fall asleep. So then I, and I'm like, I'm not about to stop because it's so interesting. But he just eventually just stopped really kind of caring about it after realizing. So when he would watch it, I'd tell him, okay, this is where we're at, you know? And he's like, oh, cool. And then, like I said, he would go to bed and then I would keep playing. And since I had, you know... It was just, and it's a beautiful game. Beautiful game. The ultimate armor, though, that you get, because you have to, like, pick up pieces throughout the whole game. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, um, which is one of the reasons why I got the strategy guide, because there's a lot of things in that game where if you miss the opportunity of getting it, you're never getting it again. Which sucks, but kind of makes sense, you know, because it, it forces more in the world. Yeah. And, um,. So, uh, the ultimate armor design, I was like, yeah, oh, because it's, I mean, the armor, like, they show the actual, like, full suit of armor, mm -hmm. basically, and then the character takes it and piecemeals it out, like, and adjusts it for herself, basically, mm -hmm. makes it more tribal looking, and it went from, like, mech suit looking armor, you know, in perfect working condition, and then she pulls it all apart and does whatever she does. And you're just like, oh, it kind of just adds a glowy thing around her. You know? I kind of wanted that to be cooler. But overall, I really have no complaints about the game. Justin just got on. Who? Justin. Hey, Justin. So it just got on. What did I miss? Uh, me painting this because I was waiting for you to paint your remark. I... You always come on late, so I just figured I'd wait for you so you could uh, see me paint your, um, see me paint your, uh, uh, Icarus or Succubus Queen. 
whichever you want. And Purple Mom said, Purple Hi, Mom. I'm tuning in late. That's okay. I'm drawing Jack and Sally. <clears throat> Can you go get me some ibuprofen for my wrist? I've been drawing and painting all day. All day. So my wrist is killing me. My left wrist from holding everything up. It's silly, right? So I'm just going to add some shading here real quick, kind of mimic what we have down here already, just better. I have a drink. Right. I just need the, uh, the medicine. Thanks. I think I lost one. I don't hear it. Well, you gotta know it really has to hurt if I take aspirin, if I take any pain medication. Is that funny? Are you laughing at me? Are you laughing at me? <laughs> I'm laughing at your funny comment. As you would have put it, that it was was that funny. What am I a clown? Do I amuse you? Oh look, that was purple. I guess uh I guess we're putting some purple on Jack today. Wow, this ink doesn't even move. So awesome. I like this. I like happy accidents. Purple it is. La la la. It's because Purple Mama was here. Your Maleficent will be out the door probably tomorrow or Friday. And Adam's piece will be out following that as well. See how this the ink's not moving at all? See that? Hmm. It's not moving at all. It's awesome. Awesome sauce. And we're gonna make red beady eyes on this guy. Come on, believe in you. Look at these red eyes. Purple Mama said, when in doubt, always go with purple. Yeah, it's a good color. I can't complain about that. I use it a lot. It's my favorite shading color, you know, because people's skin are, is often warm and it's a perfect complement to the cold. Hmm. And it adds depth. Like I said, using just black. Do you never use black in painting? Ever. As I grab my pen full of black ink. <laughs> Only when you're doing outlines, though. Black is... Blackity black, black, black is black, black, black. Like it's not black, it's midnight. Yeah, let's go with that color. It's almost like a blacky midnighty color. I got nothing on that one. I don't know. Yeah, Purple Mom said, can't wait to get our new additions. Me neither. Potentially tomorrow I will become blonde again. Uh, except my hairstylist is not feeling well. And I really don't want to not get my hair done tomorrow. So I might have a cancel, which would suck, but it is what it is. Mama 
Thomas said, it says whiners, but I believe she might mean wieners. Yep. The wieners say hi. My wieners also say hello. Oliver hurt his back the other day, so he's kind of been limping around a bit. I think, he, oh, is he back there sleeping? He's in the living room. Yeah. Sleeping room. I doped him up with some good drugs. I did, actually. Um, tramadol and like an anti-inflammatory. Rim it all. He was, he and Uzi were running uh, running out the door, the doggy door in the kitchen, and I think she like sideswiped him, and his back legs went out from under him, and he tweaked his back, so his one his hips have not been very happy, and it's been raining the last couple days, so that of course doesn't help either, so. You know how it goes. But he's doing much better today. Much better. How do we like this so far? Are we enjoying the... Jack and Sally? Sorry, I'm a little slow today. I'm just really tired. As I probably said like eight times already. Oh, I messed that up. Oh, well. Let's fix it. How did he get such perfect circles? Connor, do you know what artist could draw a perfect circle? Do what? So do you know what artist could draw a perfect circle free-handed? I know it's not Tommy. <laughs> uh, Picasso? Nope. Picasso? I don't know. No, it is not Picasso. Does anybody know? What fine artist, well, not fine artist, he was actually kind of an illustrator, but what master artist could draw a perfect circle, freehanded? Dali. guesses? Waiting on that delay to kick in. For our People are Googling. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know if I'm blocking this with my head at all. No, you're good. I'm, I'm very much trying not to block since I barked at him for two years. Move your head. Move your big fat head. That's me doing an impersonation of myself. Uh, Poodle Mama said, it looks good. Lots of paint on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was fun. <clears throat> and then Purple Mama, or Purple Mom, says no clue. So. I'll break the air. Did you know that? No. Do you even know who that is? I do not. <gasps> what? You don't know who that is? Say the name again. Albrecht Deer. Yeah. Do you want to say it properly? You got to make it sound like a Frenchy sound. Yeah. Oh. To educate you, sir. But knowing who your art teacher was, I'm not really surprised. Um... He actually was a one of the first, actually the first artist to make prints of his work. And his wife would go to the sell them while he painted in the studio. Sound familiar? He was a symbolist. No. He was a pre-Raphaelite. 
Yes. My brain, my jumbled, tired brain says properly. I may be amending tomorrow, like, I was wrong. Ghost Tommy's going to just smack me in the back of the head. That's not who he was. Is in the middle of the night, the book will fall off the... the it shelf. hits me in the head. It's in a completely different room. Like, it's in the studio, and I'm in the... I'm in the bedroom, and it just whacks me right in the head. And as it falls to the floor, it lands on the page. It actually tells you where he was. Right. Do you know who, uh, who, uh, or do, let me, let's put it this way. Do you know why Van Gogh cut his ear off? Didn't you say he sent it to... An artist that he was staying with, or that he liked, mm -hmm. yeah. not as a buddy, but more of a he was in love with. Yeah. Do you know the artist? I mean, you do, but you just don't know the artist is involved in this instance. Van Gogh was in love with Paul Gauguin. They cut off his ear to spite Gauguin. To spite him is what I mean to say. Fucked up, right? Far cry from what they teach you in art school. Was it Goya was a murderer? Caravaggio is a pedophile. Tommy Castillo is a giant narcissist. That's not much of a shock, though. Um. Hmm. Neat, huh? The star shoots across the sky and just says, "The more you know." The more you know, bling. I don't believe in the fact that, you know, if you're going to learn all about someone's art, you know, the art comes out of them and comes out of their experiences. It comes out of who they are as a person and the whole bullshit art room, you know, not knowing who, you know, saying that he cut it off for a whore is completely wrong. It's just flat out wrong it's not true he stayed with Gauguin you know in that's when he was painting the sun sunflowers and he became super obsessed with Gauguin and Gauguin was like you know I'm kind of done thanks next thing you know here's an ear Because I know we've, it's been an on and off conversation of knowing more about the, the artist as a human being and not just as the artist. Right. Because I know Rockwell was the one who... Oh, like, Rockwell was an asshole. He was. He would lock himself in his studio and he would freak out if his wife disturbed, his wife or kids disturbed him. He would flip shit. I don't want to... I think he hit, like, beat them, honestly, judging from that time period. He probably did. Um, but yeah. Yeah. He was not to be disturbed. He would come out and then take his meals when he needed to take them. You know, like, if she interrupted him for, like, here's a ham sandwich, honey. He would... He was not a happy person. He was a giant asshole. And that's one of the, like, I was, t I was talking about Connor about this because Tommy really wanted to be known not only for his art, but as the man he was. That he was a good man. 
It was very important to Tommy. So, you know, I'm happy that after the fact, we can say, hey, yeah, he, he really was a good man, you know? And um, I'm just happy that we can um, you know, that those, that that came true for him. What's up, boy? What's up? Do we need an Oliver break? I think we need an Oliver break. We need a hurt Oliver break. And by that, I mean Oliver is hurt, not that I'm actually going to physically hurt my boy. Come here. You want to paint with me? All right, come here. Ready? And up. And here's the Oliver. Ta-da. Thank you. Here's Oliver. Stop licking my mouth. Thank you. How you doing? Are you drugged out of your face? Yeah, I think you are. I bit your mouth. I bit your face. You want to paint? You want to paint? Here you go. How's that? He's not into it. My purple mom said, hi, Ollie. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay, Oliver. What else are we going to do? Oh, I need a brush. Brush, brush. I need one of those. Is that good? Okay, thank you. What, you want to smell the paints? I got to smell the paint. Just let him choose which colors to use. Whatever nose, whatever color his nose gets stuck on, what gets stuck on his nose would not be the first time. I've let him sniff the paint and he's like, bam, nose involved. I'm like, Oliver, you know, that's how it works. That's how we roll in this family. That's a interesting. Oh, yeah, thank you, boy. That color became not green. That was weird. I guess there's red in that black. It must be a bone. A bone black. Ready, Eleanor? All right. So let's do this first. So is there anything you guys would like me to, or like for me to do, or like to see from me on these streams? Anything I can improve? Uh, a blind coyote art. Hey, brother. He says, hey, Sammy, uh, you get the print I gave the people running your booth at DragonCon? I did. I did. It's in my print shop. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. How was Dragon Con for you? He said, awesome, and yeah, no problem. He said he had a blast. Yeah, I ran away from the booth a couple times. <laughs> Sometimes it shows the constant, uh, constant uh, wear of, unfortunately, my husband's dead. It gets on you. You know? But I figured out a new way to say it so it's not so brutal. I break a nail. So now I'm just going to introduce everything as all the artwork you're looking at was done by my late husband, Tommy Castillo. And then that way it's not as awkward. I guess. Ooh. We're doing white out. 
You cool with that? Don't lick the white out. Okay. I gotta sit up for a second. Okay. Uh, Blind Cody Art said, was helping a friend at their booth. Gonna try having a booth in the Artist Bazaar next year. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm doing, I know I'm going to do Dragon Con at least one more time. Uh, I'm going to definitely do it next year, but I'm not really sure after that if I'm going to keep doing it. My, my profit margin is not where I'd like it to be. We're going to have some fun tonight with this. Uh, purple mama asks or purple mom asks where is dragon con dragon con is in um atlanta that's the show that i do right after gen con in uh in atlanta georgia it sounded like you were like texting i don't know I'll ever lick my wrist and make it feel better. I never thought my left wrist would hurt. Maybe my right, but not my left. Is that weird? Tommy's like in the afterlife, like, oh yeah? You think that hurts? You should be drawn with a torn deltoid. Stop complaining. Have kidney failure and be expected to draw like a monkey. Go ahead. Keep complaining, Sam. Like that. Just from the afterlife, afterlife, he's just giving you like an Indian burn on your wrist. Yeah, he's just stabbing me in the wrist. No, my pain! No, he would never. He would never do that. He said that he would take any pain so I wouldn't have to. He was... Very much like that. Uh, Hollow Heart Throb said, maybe, and it's because you don't use your left hand as much. Mm, yeah. Blind Coyote said, I find my left wrist gets some cramps, but I've used the hand for hotkeys when doing digital work. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, I know it's, it's from holding it up, holding stuff up like this all day. Like, I totally know what it's from. I just never expected that that would be the thing that caused me pain. Like, my shoulder, my, it hurts more than my shoulder does. And I've been, I've been drawing pain in all day. As I flick white out on myself. Uh, Justin asks... Yes. Are you still going to overhaul your booth like you said you were going to do for next year's con? Yes, sir. Sure am. Yep. Well, I got some some cool shit coming our way. Yep. I'll probably be um, doing that for um, the first half of next year. So, like, it'll be there in time for, like, San Diego, stuff like that. Uh, I'm kind of considering San Diego my my bench, my bench year benchmark, even though it's really not. But that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to kind of consider it. 
So yeah, for for Gen Con next year, I'll have a a new new booth set up. And for anybody in Missouri, yeah, I just added the week after. I have to get the show details, but the week after Kansas City, I'm going straight from Kansas City to a show in Missouri. By the way, well, that's what we're doing because I have yet to tell you. So we'll be on the road for two weeks. Because I booked that at 1.30 in the morning last night. <laughs> Which apparently is like a really good time to co contact me. <laughs> Words are good or today. She's so pretty. So fried. No, I'm not. I'm I complain about being tired, but I'm not. It's a happy tired. You know? I'm just happy I get to do this awesome job. You know? I'm not really complaining. But a little bit. Just about the pain. But then I don't feel like I have the justification to actually complain because, you know, Tommy was up here crippled and blind and dying. And he's like, here's some badass art. I'm blind, you know, and uh, I'm I got a sore wrist and an achy shoulder. So I don't really feel like I have the right to complain. <laughs> uh, Cotton Canada says just a little bit of complaining. Just a little bit. Just was that sarcasm? Were you saying I'm complaining a lot? Blind Coyote Art says, I was at Dragon Con with Shotsty, Shotsty Art, up on the second floor near the con store, and Peter Morebaker. Okay. We had fresh print, we had fresh pressed shirts, wire sculptures, and vintage toys. Not sure if you were able to walk around in that area. Not at all. But that's okay. Continue. Not able if you're able to. Was there more? That was it. Oh. You read it like there was more. I was like, and? Just where you put your emphasis. My emphasis? Yeah, your emphasis. You put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> no? Didn't get that joke? I'll try, I'll treat a little hater. Next All right, I owe you honor, but you can't be here anymore. You're moving around too much, kid. I love you. I love you. I do. I love you. I know. All you want me to do is sit on the couch and listen and, and cuddle you and watch movies. I've made you a movie junkie. Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Those are good kisses. You gotta go lay down now. Okay. Could you put him on the bed with you? Is Uzi still up there? Yeah, she's up there. Could you put him on the bed with her, please? Hold on. Watch his butt. Mm -hmm. Got him in the middle? Yep. Okay. Bye, Oliver. Okay. That's better. Now I don't have a dog flailing about underneath me.
Yeah, I'm going to be adding new shows next year, too. You know, just trying to go to different places that we had always, into, always wanted to go, but we're just not able because of his health and all that fun stuff, so. If there's any shows you guys want to try and see me at, contact the shows. Tell them, bring Sammy out. Alright, this quickie became not a quickie. Is that funny? I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna paint this up real quick waiting for Justin. What are we, two hours later? Yeah, you actually ready. Right. Doesn't help that I'm working at half speed. I mean, you've been painting all day as one of the, the most talked about topics of tonight's stream, but... Was I painting all day? You said you were working on those Kermits. Yeah. Well, I was working on Kermit and John Schneider's thing. And yeah. Ow! That was my funny bone. That wasn't funny. Hold on. Uh, I can't feel my finger now. I elbowed the thing. The metal. The metal-y thing. That's okay. You just leave, uh, get as much as you can done on the remarks. And then you end the show like a uh, tune in next week to see if this piece actually gets finished. <laughs> Will Sammy finish this piece? Tune in next week to find out. No, we got to end it like The Sopranos, where I'm just in the middle of drawing and it just, it just ends. Cuts off. <laughs> <laughs> right, like in the middle of my words. I'm like, so I'm going to click. Just, what? That's it. Uh, Hollow Heart Throb said, I honestly can't tell you how inspiring you are to me, lol. You want to do, you want to do so much and just to do the work and things you want to do. Kind of sappy, I know, but meh, lol. No, it's great, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it's, I am in a very one of a kind awkward weird position in life where every weekend i do a show i have to tell people my husband's dead i really do you know and i have to talk about it all the time and uh it sucks it's hard i'm not gonna lie about that but i think um you know i just you know i'm joking around about Tommy's strength of will and character and conviction but in reality you know that's that's who he was you know and I couldn't follow that up with weakness you know I couldn't and by weakness I mean by giving up by being sad and not doing this not doing the hard part not sucking up the pain of my you know of you know, my, um, um, messed up shoulder that hurts from, you know, drawing 12 days in a row or seven days in a row, 12 hours a day, you know? Oh, that's how he did that. I just figured out a trick he did. Ah! <laughs> I can do it now. Yay. Um, you know, I, I just couldn't imagine not doing it so i like hearing that i'm inspirational to people you know that makes me feel good and it's okay i'm i'm okay with being sappy i don't know why or how i got this like super stern persona you know of you know just not being emotionless i guess maybe because i'm a stern looking individual i don't know i like sappy shit uh there's your blue tape uh, Hollow Heart Throb also said, I need to be more like that. This is why I love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Remember, courage? Courage is being afraid, but doing it anyway. That's courage. You know? Courage.
which doesn't come from anywhere else but being strong enough to say fuck this sucks let's do it anyway Hollow Heartthrob, your lore, right? If I remember correctly. All right. No, no, we don't do that here. No, no, you stay. You stay. So I'm not gonna be a yeah. Sorry. Yes, or er, Jess. Jess. Like J E S, not Laura. Or yes or Jess? J-E-S-S. -S. Okay, so it's Jess, not Laura. Got it. I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. Sorry. But I appreciate the support. You know, as I take my little fledgling, weird fledgling career that's not really fledgling in some areas, but super fledgling in others. Oh, I missed her hand. But she said it's okay. Aw, thank you. It's funny because I know everybody's names like from Facebook but sometimes I don't realize that they belong to the, the screen names of people. Like, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, it's so and so and I'm, I'm wrong because it's it, you know, like for, for Jess Jess, not Laura. Um, you know. She also added, I'm the lady who sent you the pins. Yes. They are proudly actually on, uh, I put them as tie tacks on one of, on, on Tommy's, uh, one of Tommy's ties. They're awesome. I love them. I wore them actually in, um, uh, uh, I wore them on my lanyard and hat at San Diego. And everybody was like, where'd you get your Tommy pins? And I was like, ah, they were made for me. Badass fan. And I'm not even exaggerating. I actually said badass fan. But guess we get to bring out now, kids. You know that familiar sound. He's like, what are we doing? Is this empty? Yes, apparently. What's empty? Uh, nope. Where art thou? I'm going to do this first. Be like covering spray painting on uh, cotton Canada says the lovely airbrush yep and then hollow heartthrob says well in asterisks uh, makes makes weird happy noises and this is why yeah I gotta clean it and the cotton Canada said happy just as happy I don't blame her and then Justin says hold on to your butts Hold on to your butts. Yeah, I gotta clean the airbrush, actually. I gotta readjust it. It shoots real hard. 
I got a I'm just tired. Time. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm done. Just gonna airbrush you. Hey, everybody. And lag. Good night, everybody. And we're done. Cut to here, and then tomorrow wear the same exact clothes. Cut to scene. It holds the same exact position. And we're back now. And we're done. Uh, Shy Freezy asked, what kind of airbrush is that? This is a Holbein Torticon. No, I actually put in fluid acrylic instead of airbrush paint, so it's super thick. So it doesn't shoot like, I, I grabbed the wrong color. That's why I went, you know, like that. And it needs to be adjusted. Did I just drip? Yeah, I spent like an hour getting this, uh, getting this, you know, fixed as I spilled the paint all over myself. Wait, there's more. <clears throat> yep, that's what I thought. Hold on, I'm I'm loose. I'm oozing. I just used this earlier today. It wasn't doing this before. Uh, this is a, like a $500 airbrush. And... Then we have... Snowflakes, white snow. So put it in front stupidly. Move this out of the way, thank you. this. See how it's hesitating? Mm -hmm. It's because I haven't pulled it apart and cleaned it. I just cleaned the needle and tossed it back together. I was like, I want to use it. And it's been forever since I've used air an airbrush. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It's a double. It's all based on... Like you control how much comes out. And yeah, like speed. when you hit what this, it's this. And then like how you go in and out, it's all... Um, it's all based on how you, you know, use it, I guess. up. My hand's shaking. Glowing lights! Except for that first one, which is really bright. Let's do a yellow light. Cool. I like the airbrush. It's a lot of fun. I need more practice with it because I haven't used it in friggin' forever. 
That's okay. Like that. Whoops. Problem solved. My hand is so tired. There we go. And this is why I need more practice. Justin said, you're definitely going to be visited by Tommy for not properly cleaning the airbrush. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> he didn't properly do it. This man left a dirty, clogged airbrush. Okay? That shit wasn't my fault. He's the one that died and decided, oh, I don't need to clean my airbrush. That shit's not on me. And part of it is my hand is really, like, shaky. What color should we do another light? Do blue? Yeah, we can do blue. Yeah, primary cyan. Nope, that's blue with acrylic. Halo blue. Thalo blue? They were lighter blue than Thalo blue? Cobalt! Let me not fuck this up. Yeah, I did it right. Sort of. Yeah! My hand is so fucking toast. Good thing is, I can fix it. I gotta adjust. It's leaking. See, you guys get to see all my, my fuck-ups right in the beginning. I gotta, like, go to my zen place to use this thing properly. <laughs> Are you looking at my face? That and just like the real quick. <laughs> it it okay, shoots it, real hard. It, it does. It shoots really hard. Leave me alone. Uh, my mom said, Rut Row, you tell him, Sammy. And then Justin said, Well, but you started it. <laughs> I did. And then Cotton Canada says, Airbrush is amazingly hard. <laughs> it does. Actually, I will I will freely admit that I would say about 90% is user error. No, no. Probably very true. And by probably, I mean yes, definitely. That's easy. Okay. And I've never actually used this airbrush before except earlier today. After I, well, yeah, I cleaned it and then earlier today. Mm -hmm. So, I gotta, like, go to my zen place here. It's a super, like, light touch that you need. And I just don't have it yet. And that's okay, because I am not practiced with it. And let's not breathe in alcohol vapors. Uh, still haunted says I'd buy that. What, that it's user error? Yeah, probably. And then Cotton Canada says, excuse me, Sammy, let me and my user error be. I was agreeing with her. I gotta take this all apart and clean it. It's all super dirty and gunked up with paint. Oh, look at all the paint in that. Maybe it's not exactly all user error. Wow, look at all the paint. Na, na, na. Let me fix that real quick. What was I doing? Got a little, little lights up there. And this. Totally fucked that up. That's funny. Let's repaint this real quick. Tommy.
Tommy's just shaking his head like, <laughs> "Really, Sam?" All right, and last, certainly not least. Poodle Mama said, "Gotta go rustle up some grub." Sounds good. Glad I made it. Glad I made it almost to the end of the painting. It looks great. Yeah, well, like one more thing, and then we're done. And then I think I'm gonna call it because I have like the coordination of a, you know, spastic llama. You should Don't. end it like that. Just like straight, like put the paint in your mouth and poof, right over the paint, like a real llama. <laughs> And just start eating it. <laughs> no, that's what you got Uzi and Oliver for. No, they won't eat the paint. They gotta eat the paint. They just gotta eat a little corner of the piece. Oh, so Oliver, so yeah, he would chew it up. Oliver has before. It's snowing. Look at the snow, everyone. Yeah, Cotton Canada says, also, I'm being a majored a major green-eyed monster over your watercolor palette right now. Which one? I think the camera's right over. Uh, this one? Yeah, your. Oh yeah. Your Totoro kit. My Totoro. Yeah. Fuck you, Sally. <laughs> right on her face. Man, it shot so hard. <laughs> I'm done for tonight. Oh my god. Uh, there. Problem solved. <laughs> I'm calling it at that one. <laughs> now I just need the signature. No. <laughs> oh my god. Well, you get to see my successes and my failures as I airbrush over my $70 pen. <laughs> it has character now. Yeah. I gotta fix her face. <laughs> There's so many comments right now. I'll read this the way that it was typed because it, it, it won't make sense. So Cotton Canada says, direct quote, fuck you, Sammy. And then, <laughs> and then real quickly added, Sally, oh God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, that's funny. And then Justin says, you got too excited, Sammy. <laughs> I did. I did. I got this. Sally likes to take it on the face. Oh. I'm so tired. Uh, welcome to the stream, folks. Uh, See, and I guess from how tired you are, you'll end it just the way it needs to be ended. You'll porky piggy. That's all, folks. Uh, hold on. I got to fix her effing lipstick now. It got all over. I pulled half of it off with that white paint. I can't believe I did that. That's just hilarious. So I guess tonight's stream will be called, will be titled, Sammy Paint, Sammy Does Remarks on Tommy's Prince. Quoted, Sammy Got a Facial. Or no, Sally, Sally, got, Sally got a Facial. Sally gets a facial. <laughs> Sally did get a hardcore facial. Uh Sally gets shot, and not the way you think it means. <laughs> it's a really long, drawn-out explanation. Pearl necklace! Sally gets a pearl necklace. She got it all over the place. Jack was just really happy about that. See, now after that, Jack just looks very concerned. He's like, the white I'm in his sorry! Face and his this doesn't normally happen to me. I normally last longer than that. <laughs> uh, this normally doesn't happen. <laughs> I gotta fix that one spot and then we're good. Oh, that's hilarious. <clears throat> I don't know if this was meant the way it might sound. But I feel like this is a moment where my mom might have a little bit of a connection with your mom. So my mom says, every ghoul needs a facial every once in a while. But I think she might meant girl. Every ghoul 
No, she can be funny. She's kind of ghoulish. Sally's kind of a Frankenstein-y character. She, she could be actually being clever. Your mom could actually be being clever, Connor. How she needs every... Every ghoul needs a facial every once in, every once in a while. And then uh, Heartthrob or Hollow Heartthrob said, "I just kicked her. I just kicked over my cup of water, laughing. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> we're damn funny. Oh my god. So in so <laughs> when you think about it, if this is the end of the show, that was the climax." <laughs> Look, folks, he actually has a personality. Quite literally, that was our climax. Let me sign it and just give up for the day. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I I don't know anymore. Where are you going? I'm going over Tommy's name that was here. It would be nice if I spelled my husband's name right. I think it's cool to sign both of us on here. Do you guys like that? I do that. There's our, um, there it is. I got nothing. <laughs> That's all folks. <laughs> so yeah, that was our stream for the day <laughs> with a very, uh, interesting ending. What, what's our time at? What are we uh, at? Right now we're at 2 hours and 11 minutes. Yeah. All right. I am very tired, so I think I am going to cut it here for the night. Uh, but we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, we will be back tomorrow, 7 p.m., same bat time, same bat channel. I will potentially be blonde uh, if my stylist doesn't bail on me and claim sickness. And I will hopefully be way more well rested. And tune in tomorrow because I will be painting and doing remarks on. Let's take shot face shot Sally out of the way. I'll be painting on this lovely lady. How much of that can you see? You got most of her in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, for Justin. And then I will also be painting this for Justin, which is Icarus. Can you see Icarus? Yeah, you're good. Okay. And if I'm feeling up to it at that point, I'll also be painting that, remarking that. So that's the end of our stream. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel tomorrow. I got nothing to follow up the face shot. I got paint all over me now. Now I know how Tommy gets paint all over him. Like, how did that get there? Like, I don't know. Do I have it on my face yet? I'm a true artist when I get it on my face. But Tommy touched his face a lot. I don't touch my face a lot. He always did this. I don't know why. Yeah, Cotton, Cotton Canada added, uh, tomorrow's going to be fun. Good night, Sammy. And Co. Or company. Yes. It makes, it's What? He said, tomorrow's going to be fun. Good night, Sammy. And Co. Oh, meaning you. Yeah. Company. Yes. And then Justin says, hell yeah. So. It's all Justin tomorrow. Um. Yeah. That's all I got. So, good night, folks. And we'll see you manana. Peace out. Biddy, 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 biddy. That's all, folks.